Well, we finished all of our cuts, and now we're ready to assemble our awl box. Before we do, I'd like to point out one feature that we add to our commercial versions of our owl boxes. What we do is we cut grooves into one side of the front of the owl box. So the front outside is plain and the inside has all these slots. These slots are designed so that baby owlets and even the adults can climb their way up from the inside. It makes it a little easier for them. Now I'm not demonstrating this because it's a very dangerous process that I do on the miter saw. I'm not happy with the way that I do it and so I really don't want you to do it. If you do choose to cut slots, I'd recommend using a hand tool such as a chisel, perhaps a dremel, um, anything to kind of scrape some lines in to allow them to climb up. Some people will staple some screen material or something like that to the inside to make it easier. Do whatever you think is best. Uh, again, it is a dangerous process to do on a miter saw. You can't do it free form. You might be able to do it on a table saw or a router. All of those are dangerous tools that I don't really want to get into in this video. Um, it's optional. I don't think it's going to hurt very much if you don't put them in there. Uh, but it's not a bad idea if you do either, so it's up to your discretion. So let's go over the pieces we have now. We have the smallest piece, which is going to be the bottom. We have the front, which is a longer piece, about 15 inches. In this case, I've cut the slots into the one side. The top, and the top you can always tell because it has bevel cuts. Two sides, which are pretty obvious, they have the angle cuts on the one end, and the longest piece will be the back. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the front to the two sides. So grab your two sides and your front and lay them on a workbench. Make sure you have plenty of space to work with. This is going to be a little tricky because things are going to want to fall down, but once we have a couple of screws in place, it'll come together quite nicely. To start the assembly process, we have the two sides and the front. First thing we're going to do is mark out where we're going to put the screws on the front. It will go through the front and into the two sides. So you're going to make a mark toward the edge at the two inch seven and a half inch and 13 inch mark. And you'll repeat this on both sides of the front. Two inch, seven and a half inch, and 13 inch. This is about where we're gonna pre-drill the holes so that we can fasten everything together with the screws. Once the front is marked, you want to place it on top of the two sides like this. It's going to be a little wobbly, so you're going to have to be careful. Sometimes it flops over on you. Um, just take your time. You're going to start with the side that is closest to you because it's easier to get at. The important point here is to align the bottom of the front piece with the edge bottom of the side. You can see that there are perfectly flush with each other here and they're flush on this edge also. This is the alignment that you want. For this first screw that we're going to put here, the only alignment you have to worry about is this. Don't worry if the back other side is not aligned yet. Let's get this one in first. What you'll need to do is use your hand to clamp the two pieces of wood together and then you'll drill a hole. You want to drill it deep enough with the countersink Now we have the hole drilled and it has a countersink. The 1 and 5 8 inch screw, place it into the hole. Make sure that everything is stayed aligned. You want to be aligned on the outside and aligned on the bottom. So it might shift a little bit, so hold it in place carefully with your hand.
as you can see it kind of wants to jump around a little bit so if it's a little bit off that's okay but try to keep it pretty close next we're going to do the screw toward the top we follow the same procedure we're going to pre-drill with the countersink and then fasten it with the one and five eighth inch screw and when you drill these holes they're going to be about a quarter to three eighths of an inch away from the edge Again, as you're fastening this, make sure that the wood here is flush between the edge of the front and the side. Now that these two screws are in place, this side is starting to come together. So what we'll do is we'll drill and fasten the center hole. That's one side complete. Now that the one side is fastened, let's rotate the entire unit so we can get at the other side. Here we are at the other side, and again the alignment process is the same. You want flush at the bottom and flush at the side so everything lines up nicely. Now here you can see an important point you need to watch out for with this pine is that you'll often have knots along the edges. You really don't want to fasten to drill or to screw in your uh, screws into a knot. The wood could split, it's hard to drill through and whatnot. So as you're assembling, look to see where your marks are and make sure that they are not going into a knot. If they are, shift them a little bit one way or the other to avoid these sorts of knots. Now here I have the mark about two inches from the edge, so that's clear of this knot over here. As we did on the other side, we're going to drill a pilot hole here at the bottom, toward the bottom end. And we'll fasten it. Again, make sure that the corner and the bottom are aligned. Don't worry about the toward the top. Now we're going to move to the top. We're going to pre-drill again making sure that the front and the side are flush. And then fasten with the one and five eight inch screw. And finally we'll do the center on this side. of the unit is attached to the two sides using six screws, three on each side. One thing you want to be careful of again is you want to try to center your screw into the center of the side that you're going to be going into. Don't go too close to the edge or you risk splitting the wood. This is an inside view of the unit so far. You can see the slots are on the inside of the unit. These slots again are optional. If you have the equipment to make them, go ahead and make them. Next, we're going to attach the back to the owl box. Now you'll notice when you lay the back in place that the back lumber will overhang on both ends. There's a reason for this overhang. This is where the unit will be attached to the tree. There'll be two holes drilled in the bottom and two holes on the top, so we need the overlap. Toward the bottom of the owl box, and again, this is the flat part of the owl box, not the angled side. You want to make a mark on the back about two inches from the end. So this is basically allowing two inches of overhang on the bottom. And then align the back to the bottom side edge here so that the two inches is overhanging. The exact distance is not critical, but it should be within a quarter to a half an inch. 